Hey YouTube, here's a sneak peek at our latest release covering the 2022 Train Mountain Triennial. And if you don't know what that is, keep watching. Ever since the invention of the steam locomotive, there has been a fascination with trains. For many, the love of trains started with a loop of track around a Christmas tree, which quickly grew into a collection of little trains. Some went to work for the railroad to operate bigger trains. Somewhere in the middle, there is a hybrid of the two, model trains that are big enough to ride on. It is called the Live Steam Hobby, and it is almost as old as railroading itself. In the pine forests of southern Oregon, one can find the largest live steam railroad in the world, Train Mountain. Founded in 1987, this 2,200 acre park contains over 36 actual miles of track, including yards and sidings. Club members bring their trains in all shapes and sizes. Visitors are welcome too. And no, you don't have to own a train to have a good time at Train Mountain. Several meets are held every year at the railroad park, but the biggest of all is the Triennial, which brings hundreds of live steam enthusiasts from all over the world. The first big meet was held in the year 2000. We first covered the event in 2012, then 2015, 2018, and... And we could watch it just kind of get closer and closer and closer and then kind of come up over the top of the butte until it you know, got in the, the electric poles knocked out the power and then of course everything it ran for a little while battery power and then it quit when everything kind of got hot and fried so it was surreal to watch it just come up and take over and then we found out later that the winds came up and kind of shifted it from a southerly flow straight to the west and that really is what saved the majority of our park so our losses were basically uh, some track and some track panels uh, the plastic panels that uh, melted um, and some track actually kind of, it, it warped and bent up. It was uh, interesting how that all happened with uh, Mother Nature. Um, but we were uh, afterwards able to go through and uh, salvage all of that. An interesting antidote to the whole thing is that when they were doing the uh, uh, fire retardant and helicopter support water drops, uh, one of the pilots up in the air noticed some yellow buildings down there on the, gr on the ground. Their focus was to try to save structures, so they came over and did a big water drop over these yellow buildings and, and it killed the fire there and they moved on. We later realized that what he dropped his water on was the model buildings at Crane. So the model station, the water tower there, a couple picnic tables, <laughs> he didn't know the difference from the air, but he saved our little village of, of Crane siding up there uh, uh, by doing that. He took a lot of ribbing for that. but. Uh, uh, interesting stories sometimes that come out of this so we were very fortunate so no sooner did we get the track all repaired and back in service and everything than the following spring we had a uh, large 
a pop-up thunderstorm that came over and dropped a couple inches of rain in uh, you know, like 20 minutes or something like that. That's my estimate. But we got a big mud flow down off the Steiger that came in and then just buried everything in mud and uh, displaced the track and kind of like you know the real railroad you see in some of the news footage of track bent up displaced and we had all of that. I mean it was we uh, had to look close to the pictures. Was this a real railroad or a model railroad? It was a model railroad. So then we had to start all over again. And we were able to get uh, all the main line and some of the sidings done, you know, replenished and uh, dug out and fixed and running again uh, afterwards. So again, kudos to a lot of our local volunteers uh, that jumped in and got all the track work done because that was a Herculean effort. I mean, we were talking in some spots a foot of mud and dirt that totaled the track we had to dig out. The 242 fire burned over 14,000 acres and destroyed 36 structures. Thankfully, the wind shift spared most of Train Mountain, with the northern section around Steiger Butte receiving most of the damage. And there you go, a sneak peek of this year's Train Mountain Triennial video, released this week on DVD, high-definition Blu-ray, and 4K digital. 
If you want to pick up a copy of the full program, it is available at our website, 7ideaproductions.com. There is also a link to Train Mountain's website if you're interested in more of what they're all about. Please like and subscribe to see more content like this. And as always, until next time, thanks for watching.